nothing you can do about it. YouTube family, welcome back. It's your boy Chris McLean Cliff for September 9th, 1981, in the Gullah Geechee town of Savannah, Georgia. He'll always be revered as a hometown legend. Way before Savannah, Georgia would produce the likes of Aquando Rondo, Savannah's golden child was camouflaged. Savannah is historically one of the only places in the South, outside of the Carolinas, that you'll still find the Gullah Geechee people. The Gullah Geechees were descendants of Africans who were enslaved in the Sea Island cotton plantations on the lower Atlantic coast. Many came from rice growing regions of West Africa. The nature of their enslavement on isolated islands and coastal plantations created a unique culture with deep African remnants that are clearly visible and the Gullah Geechee people's distinctive art, crafts, food ways, music, and their language. I want to chill in the day, y'all one more again. This your time, Hunter Dee Punson. Tell the island South Kakalaki in the Gullah Geechee Nation. Savannah, Georgia, and Atlanta, Georgia may be in the same state, but they are two completely... So that's her dad, man. Um, a rapper. Um, who was into a lot of shit. Okay, let's just put it like this, man. He was at home sleeping when Capers got executed. His third project, Strictly for the Streets, Drugs, Sex, and Violence in 2001 actually went gold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, man. I, I, I... <laughs> it's only separated from South Carolina by the Savannah River. And this will be the same river that will sell the ships holding the Gullah Geechee slaves that would later populate Savannah, Georgia. So the roots are a little deeper in Savannah than it is in Atlanta. Although it has a dark past, Savannah, Georgia would be the hostess city of the South for its Southern hospitality. He'd be born in the Hitch Village area of Savannah. He'd be an extremely talented young man at a young age with his flows on the mic. He'd actually start making noise at a young age and be discovered by crime affiliates, a local rap crew working as a record label. Then they drop it. <laughs> he was discovered by crime affiliates, <laughs> a local rap crew. They should be discovered by crime affiliates, a local rap crew working as a record label. Then they drop his first project in 1999 entitled Crime Pays, which would go on to your name. Oh my god. No way. <laughs> it's I'm like, like it's crying like, laughing. <laughs> it's, it's like a Key and Peele skit, man. Uh, and this is the dad of the girl who got pushed today and the brother jumped off the, out of the stands and got into the and, and came onto the to the court and pushed the other girl. Um so hey, after, now, after after finding out this guy, <clears throat> it's hard to believe that that his wife wasn't able to live that fairy book family lifestyle that she was hoping for. Crazy. Yeah, she's the perfect life, he said. Um, salute to Kay Lewis. He says, should women be allowed to be male basketball refs? Do they have enough understanding of male competitive dynamics to do the job correctly? Um, there are plenty of um, female referees in um, basketball. I don't know if football they should be. But in basketball, you know, I mean, I, I ain't going to trip off of basketball because they, they play, at least they play basketball. Um, salute to Beast Life over 50. He says, the Iowa versus Nebraska game had all gliders. It was also a championship game. It went into OT with no fights and been jumping onto the court. <laughs> yeah, I saw some of that game. Caitlin Clark, man, they they pulled it out. Um, shout out to Caitlin Clark, man. Um First misstep she make, man, they're going to be on her ass, though, because um, they going to be like, if, you, if your black player had done that, if, man, if Caitlin Clark fucking, I don't know, if she does anything, they're going to say if if a black player did it, they would have be called her a thug or they would have been all over the news or they would have called her ghetto. So Caitlin Clark better be on her best behavior. Um, hey, yeah, did you notice? One thing that that uh, the mother said about the killing, she goes, um, "Yeah, he was murdered, or whatever," and nothing's been done about it. It's like right. 
you know, she's like putting the blame on like the police or something. Like they're not doing enough to catch the the killer. Like nothing's been done about it. It's crazy. Right. Like, then they dropped his first project in 1999, entitled "Crime Pays," which would go on to be a legendary work of art in Savannah, Georgia. Man, his second project, "I Represent." came out in the year 2000. It climbed up to number 58 on the R&B and hip hop charts on billboards. That album had 18 tracks on them. And all of them will go on to be hood classics. The people in Savannah, Georgia can recite every lyric, word by word, track for track. But on that same year that Young Camouflage would release his second project, he'd be picked up for his alleged involvement in the homicide that will tragically take the life of a 16-year-old teenager. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yeah. Not, not a thug, though. Nobody's a thug in any of this. <sighs> On that same year the Young Camouflage would release his second project, he'd be picked up for his alleged involvement in the homicide that'll tragically take the life of a 16-year-old teenager named Kenneth Capers, or also known in the streets of Savannah, Georgia, as Boo. He was later released after doing about three months because the evidence was admissible and Camouflage had an alibi. He said he was at home sleeping when Capers got executed. Who believes that? Who believes that Camouflage was home sleeping when Capers got executed? Probably not. Probably not the guy that shot Camouflage. He didn't oh, believe me. Uh, wow. His third project, strictly for the streets, drug, sex, and violence, in two thousand and one, actually went gold. One of my personal favorite songs, "Raised in the Ghetto," being on there. He'd also land a feature with Atlanta heavy hitter Pastor Troy on his song, Georgia Niggas. Everybody in Savannah revered Camouflage as a raw version of Lil Wayne. He'd even do a song with Birdman in 2002 called Laying My Stunt Down. One might even say he's the reason for Wayne switching up his attire with his braids to rocking the dreads. If you look closely at that time, there could be some comparisons as far as the aesthetic goes, but that was all just up for speculation to the people in Savannah, Georgia. September 2002, the same year the young camouflage would land that Birdman feature, he'll find himself in an altercation of where he'll be shot on West 61st Street in Savannah, Georgia. Shortly after that incident, he moved out of the hood and into the suburbs of Bryan County. In Bryan County, the poverty level was very low. In fact, it was actually non-existent at the time. Camouflage. So, so he moved into a white neighborhood. <laughs> Camouflage, man. Camouflage flight. Flodge flight, man. God damn, man. ain't that a bitch? This guy yeah, him being a, a white neighborhood. Him being eliminated before she was born is most likely the best thing that ever happened to her. Because most likely, well, two things. One is he would have never been in her life to begin with, even if he was alive. And two, even if he was, <laughs> She probably would have been shot up in the back seat from a hit on him. You know what I think, though? This is what I think. I think when you got a guy like this who's participating in high-risk behavior, like this is highly risky behavior. Um, 2000, he died in 2003, 2004, 2005. 2000, how does he make it? from 2004, five, six, it's very hard to make it to 2024 unless you go to prison. I think had he gone to prison for a homicide, if he had that, that body that he beat, the one where he killed, what, Boo, the guy, Boo, or and he, and he, and they didn't have enough evidence to convict, I mean, um, to, to take him to trial, so they dropped it. Had he gone to prison for that, he would be coming home right now. He would still be alive. So I don't think those guys even make it far 
everybody feels like, oh, if he didn't die that day, he everything would have been roses. Not nah, those guys either gonna die the next year or the year after that, or they're gonna go to prison for a long time. Facts, man. Yo, you know the neighborhood knows who killed them, but no one wants to talk. You know, it might have been handled in the streets, man. This is yeah. Flau J's father, y'all. Flau J, the a star of LSU basketball, one of the stars of LSU basketball. It's her dad, Camouflage. She named after him. Her name is Flau J. His name was Camouflage. On West 61st Street in Savannah, Georgia. Shortly after that incident, he moved out of the hood and into the suburbs of Bryan County. In Bryan County, the poverty level was very low. In fact, it was actually non-existent at the time. Camouflage would sell 30,000 units on its own without a major push. So the money was never even an issue. Even though he had moved to the suburbs, you could still catch Camouflage in the hood with a street team promoting his music. The song with Birdman would go on to be legendary. But Cut Friends would be the song that would gain him nationwide recognition. The song's lyrics reflect of a young lady engaging in unloyal behavior behind her man's back, all while linking up with another dude to get some cut, and later becoming Cut Friends. After the release of Cut Friends, he'll shoot a music video to the single, and after that, his phone wouldn't stop ringing with label offers. Camouflage purposely spelled his stage name differently to avoid confusion with the notorious New Orleans rapper, Mac the Camouflage Assassin. As a teenager, Young Jason sought refuge in rap music like N.W.A. and Tupac Shakur, seeking to put his life experiences on tape. Camouflage started his rap career and he sold 20,000 copies of Crime Pays, an album he released with the hip-hop group Crime Affiliate. He'd be the first rapper to put Savannah, Georgia on the map. When I represent, his solo album on the independent label Pure Pain sold over 50,000 copies. Universal Music Group offered the rapper a deal. However, Camouflage was arrested for possession of crack cocaine. Universal ultimately wouldn't pick up the option on his contract, even though the charges were dropped later. He couldn't stay out of the streets at a young age. Young so he beat the crack the crack um, charge. He beat the murder charge. You notice in the pattern here, guys? This criminal justice system is heavy-handed racist criminal justice system guys press one man label pure pain sold over fifty thousand copies universal music group offered the rapper a deal however camouflage was arrested for possession of crack cocaine universal ultimately wouldn't pick up the option on his contract even though the charges were dropped later he couldn't stay out of the streets at a young age Young Jason would become accustomed to making hand over fist money fast. He, like many other young minorities in the city of Savannah, Georgia, profited from the drug trade. And Camouflage was a hustler. He didn't see the need to stop dealing if it was still putting food on the table. Hey, uh, the story of Camouflage. So, is that girl named after him? Camouflage J? Yeah, Flower J like is that? named after him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I, I mean, I, is it, you think it's, is it even possible to have like, to miss, first of all, to miss somebody that you never met and then, but then to find out what kind of a man he was, like, do you think I, she really has emotional ties to him? Yeah. I don't think she looks at him as a bad guy though. Like it, everything is relative. Like this whole thing of him being a bad guy, he's like, if, if, He's like most guys in that area where she would be. Look at her mom. Like her mom was talking about how it was going to be a perfect life with this guy. How they were going to have the perfect fairy tale life. You didn't hear it. Like they, yeah. it's a different mindset. It's a different. These type of activities are viewed differently by these people. So any. I mean, that's. This is mo you're saying it's more specific to the Sun community, right? I, mean, I don't see like another community finding out that their dad was like this, and then still be like, oh, you know, I, 
I, I miss him or I wish he was here. Like if I found out like this was oh uh, shit. I don't know. If I found out it was my dad, I'm like, I'm like good grief, I'm glad he's gone. If you found out your dad was a was a was a gangster, you would be you would be upset. Yeah, like if I found out to, if I find out tomorrow I was adopted and my real dad was a gangster and he was like into all kinds of shit and he ended up dying and I was in an orphanage and then I was adopted, I'd be like, yeah, thank God he's fucking not here. I'm glad he died. I wouldn't all all of a sudden have some emotional bond to some guy who was a fucking thug. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think I would. Yeah, you think, but when it's your own blood, you never know, man. You yeah, know guess, what, man? I, just don't see, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see it. Yeah, I think that's a cultural thing, man. That's a cultural difference that that you have. Like, this guy would be seen as a hero, man. He's a rapper. This exactly. guy's a hero. How would you feel about it, Fisherman? Yeah, I wouldn't care that he was dead. Salute to Eric S. Op Nation Hall of Famer coming through once again. Salute to Gene B. Shout out to Crazy Eight Legs getting a membership for one month, man. And everybody renew your memberships, man. Renew everybody who got a free membership from one of these Oc Nation Hall of Famers, man. Renew your membership when it comes up at the end of the month. They're going to give you an alert. YouTube will give you an alert that your membership's up for renewal. And just press renew or whatever, whatever it does, whatever it says. The camouflage was a hustler. He didn't see the need to stop dealing if it was still putting food on the table. The story of camouflage is actually crazy. I mean, the man had a lot of potential. He was actually only 21 years old. It ain't the poverty, man. Yeah. Yo, I get so tired of that excuse. My parents, we lived in poverty in New York City for years. And my parents didn't sell drugs or none of that. They worked 12 hour shifts. So get get the fuck out of here with that. It ain't the it ain't the poverty, man. It's the um it's the DNA, man. It's the DNA, man. That's what it is, man. It's it's your it's the genes, man. Cause um at some point, man, like jacking somebody's car, joy riding around town and shit, and doing a drive by and it on some other people. That's not new giving you nutrition man that's not feeding your body with minerals man that's not, that's not sustenance man well you said nutrition yeah it's not like it's not like if, if somebody gave this guy five million dollars and the next day he's going to enroll in in a in a community college and start taking classes to become some sort of an engineer it ain't that has nothing to do with poverty <laughs> Did he I just say they don't have high schools? 16 schools, I'm sure. Hmm? He said they don't have high schools. Nah, they got high schools. I don't think he said. He must have said I, something. No, nah, nah, that's what he said. Definitely. It's the probably lack of everything. I got 16, you heard me? 16 schools, I'm sure. I'm about to switch up and get some platinum, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> Show. 
I mean, they should feel, they should feel like I'm in a 1965 or something, you know what I'm saying? Don't judge the book by its cover because I'm a hardworking man, you know? They pulled me over, they just be practicing searching, you know, putting the dogs on me. So it's just like, if you doing what you doing, they shouldn't be bothering you, you know what I'm saying? If you coming down the street, let's say 25 and you doing 50, and they got a reason to harass you, cool, but don't just pick on you because you on 22s like me, you know what I'm saying? And you got a pretty color paint job like me, you know what I'm saying? Or you just a hot boy with a mop full of gold teeth, you know what I'm saying, like me. But uh, yeah, yeah, I feel like they should give everybody a fair opportunity. Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a man by the car that he drive or the clothes that he wear. Uh, or the fact that he yeah. beat a murder charge and a crack charge and he got shot and he been all type of shit and he got albums. With the, I mean, or he has albums called Drug Sex Violence. Yo, these people are so ungrateful talking about they don't get nothing. They don't get food stamps. They don't get welfare. They don't get WIC. They don't get none of that. Nothing. <laughs> they get Community nothing. centers, community basketball court, pools, yeah, computer labs. Exactly. Listen, man, listen, man, when you have a when you have a baby, man, and you have to pay for all that stuff, the 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 diapers and shit like that, and the goddamn um. Just everything to deal the swaddlers and the clothes and the onesies and all that shit. They get all that shit for free, man. Oh they yeah. Get all of that shit for free. His appearance, you know what I'm saying? Cause a man could be doing anything. He could be have more money than you, you know what I'm saying? On a whole nother level. Look at look at Master P, you know what I'm saying? So that's the way the game go, man. They need to just stop judging a book by its cover. Give a brother a chance at you. What is he even saying? Give a brother a chance, man. But from like he, he went from I mean, he just going all over the place. I got gold in my mouth. Don't judge me. I ain't got nothing, but also I got this fine ass car. He's just all over. Oh man. Um He ended up dying in the shooting. May 2003, while walking his toddler son, landing outside of a studio in Midtown, Savannah, Georgia. So is that the one who jumped on the court? He was he 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 was with his dad when he um was killed. Wow. Mm. Damn. That's trauma wow. forever. So maybe we gotta give him a break for jumping on the court, man. <laughs> you know. Like I said, he was 21 years old. Because, you know, you get a, because, you know, if something like that happened to you, you, you get to do anything you want for the rest of your life. Oh, he was taken to Memorial Health University Medical Center, where he later passed away, and his son was unharmed. Now, spectators in Savannah would have alleged that the reason Camouflage got killed is because of beef between him and a big time drug kingpin named Felix Scott. He had the streets of Savannah, Georgia on lock, and it was alleged the camouflage was serving for him for a while before his music started to pop. Legend has it is that camouflage didn't pay him, and he would run off with the earnings, and that would eventually escalate and start a beef between the two. Felix knew that it could get bad because both parties had money, and it takes money to go to war. So Felix would tell his boys that if he ended up getting killed or anything ever happened to him, the camouflage was responsible for. It is alleged the camouflage in this homeboy Michael Grant did indeed kill Felix Scott. Holy <laughs> <laughs> shit. I didn't see that one coming. Yeah, I thought you were going to say Felix is the one that put a hit on him. That was he, a killed the big, he killed the big time drug dealer that had said his city on smash. Kill Boo. Yo, this guy, this guy was, yo, I mean, listen, man, I don't glorify that shit, but yeah, my man was with it, man. Yo, he was 10 toes down, man. Yeah, she proud of him, man. She ain't fucking looking at this guy like he know, 
yo, and, and the, yo, this guy's like fucking Robin Hood to black people, man. Yeah, oh yeah, this dude, this dude was a fucking gangster, man. Yeah, she, yeah. But I mean, not, I'm just like curious, curious as to like she's seeing his videos and he's just talking this. Un, you know, like it's just unbelievable what he's saying. Twenty one years she's old. Like, man. oh, I miss daddy. Dude, you know, dude, he's twenty one years old. This is not like a. 30, 40 years old. This guy's 21. A 21 year old son, man, with an IQ probably in the 70s or the 80s, who's in the streets heavy. What are you supposed to be on here using big words and shit? That'll fuck his shit up worse. That'll, 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 that'll make him a mark, man. He doing the right thing for the life he's living. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm saying right, right, right. Well, what I mean well, is that if she's looking back at this and these are the videos that she has to get to know her dad, it, her reaction is like, oh, I miss dad. He seemed like such a nice and caring guy. <laughs> like, Look at the weird. guys who are popular today, right? Look at the guys in black culture that are popular today. They act the same way. Look at the guys who are popular, the, the, the rappers, the um the ball players they act like this a lot of them a lot of the social media influencers the streamers the people who she as a fucking you know 20 year old would look up to they act like this he's 21 when he died he's a killer a gangster, a drug dealer, a real gangster. Like he wasn't just like fucking killing scrubs. He was killing, you know, other fucking major figures in the streets in the city. She gonna she gonna think that he, yo, he's a legend. Yeah. Black coach is different, man. He, this guy's a legend. Yep. Yeah, she she's probably been told by her mom, like, you know. Hey, look, he has to do what he has to do to provide for the family. He was just trying to exactly. make it in this, you know. Exactly. She probably sees it as a sympathetic eye to it, you know. Salute the wicked, man. He say they killed him in front of his kids. Same as today. Yeah, man. Um, Hold it down for me for one second, guys. I got to go do something right quick. Hold it down. Go ahead, Chief. What's up, Cool Cat, man? How you been? Shut up, man. How you doing, bro? Hey, What's going so, on? Uh, yeah, for, uh, I happened to um, catch the Oscars today. You know, they were on. Oh, yeah? And, uh, yeah, I was, I was like, okay, you know what? Let's see how, let's see this woke-ass shit, you know? But <laughs> surprisingly, I didn't hear one woke speech. I didn't hear one, like, um, diversity. Sorry, nothing about diversity. Um, most of the nominees, like I, from what I saw, like 99% of the nominees and the winners were gliders. I was shocked, pleasantly surprised at that. I was like, wow, what a difference. It was weird really? seeing that. Yeah. Wow. Like I was back in the eighties or something. That's pretty shocking, really. Yeah, yeah, I was very surprised. Cause I'm, I'm thinking, okay, we're gonna see all this like people come up, accept their award, and then give a big ass speech about how we need to, you know, white supremacy sucks and we need more representation. None of that shit. None of it. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I was surprised. Please. Still boring though, but I had nothing else coming on, so I was like, let me just see this real quick. I don't think yeah. I, I don't think I've seen any of the movies that were nominated. Uh, Oppenheimer, that movie won every almost everything, but I, I haven't seen that movie. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't watch Hollywood too much, man. They they pull uh you know you know uh guys who play with kids in a wrong way. Mm -hmm. You know. I'm not trying to like get the stream messed up, so. No, but you. We, you know what I'm saying, like, so it's just nah, hell. No. But 
supply and demand. You know. Yeah, I can't remember when the last time I went to the theater. I don't even remember the last time I went to the theater to watch a movie. Most most of the movies I watch are bootleg movies. Like I got an app that'll make uh, I can watch for free. So I just watch some of those. Yeah, you notice how they always want to change every man superhero into a woman? Right. Into a black like, woman. Yeah, yeah. Every single time, bro. Every single time. Like Yeah, race swapping is huge still. It's still pretty big. What's wrong with that, man? <laughs> What's wrong with um turning um every single um superhero to a black woman? Oh, that? I mean, <laughs> I mean nothing. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Yeah, why man. Not? Why not, man? But then, can we take Black Panther to uh, Ryan Gosling? <laughs> oh, oh you no, cultural appropriation, man. Uh, yeah. You know, I was telling uh, I was telling Cool Cat I watched the Oscars today, and surprisingly, there was like nothing woke about it. Nobody gave any. Oh yeah, they know. Speech. They know. Hey, listen, they yeah. know. Everybody knows that. Like, listen, the country's turning. Biden's calling um, migrants illegals. Um, everybody knows, man. All the, the San Francisco has like. They they done with the woke shit. New York is checking bags in the subway. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm yeah, saying? I, like every everybody's right. starting to turn. And no, no, listen, they're turning because the election's coming. Like, like if oh. this wasn't an election year, they wouldn't do it. But everybody knows that the, the, the country is tired of all the crime. The country's tired of fucking sun people, black people. Being fucking because we when we talk about crime, man, everyone knows they talk about thug being a, a dog whistle. Crime is a dog whistle. When you say crime, everybody know you talk about black people, man. Yep. Yeah, they but talk, they, they, they ruin spring break. <laughs> in my morning. Yeah. Salute. I mean, salute you, you, you the out. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say, even if they have. Javon, like, let, let me just get this. Salute to Nick Tal Javon, man. He says, crazy that sons will say Section 8 food assistance, low education standards, <laughs> DEI employment programs, programs for criminals ain't no help. Listen, this listen, it ain't no help because it don't move them, it don't, it don't make them better, it don't raise their lot in life. That what he mean by that is saying that all this shit. He, he, Nothing raises us up. You know how they say a uh, 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 what a tide lifts all boats. We not us, man. <laughs> we the only boat that don't get lifted by a rising tide. <laughs> and he think that that's because y'all not doing enough. He don't understand that that's because nothing will ever be enough because of our DNA. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay. But I mean, they can't complain because in, in in Africa there's none of that. If you stop, there's no food stamps. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. But all right. Hours later, Michael Grant gets killed in retaliation by Dorian Orr. Camouflage went on radio and says that he will be riding for his friend Michael Grant. Then a couple days. Hold on, man. We got to back this up. This is crazy how deep in the streets this guy was. Son was unharmed. Now, spectators in Savannah would have led the reason camouflage hey, yo, got somebody killed. Somebody got some noise in the background, man. I think that's you, Cool Cat. Hold on. I, I'll just hop in the, in the chat. But, uh, hey, yo, nation, man, hit that like, man. It's, do it for me, man. Do it for the nation. Do it for the coolest cat in the chat. Salute. Salute, man.
killed is because of beef between him and a big time drug kingpin named Felix Scott. He had the streets of Savannah, Georgia on lock, and it was alleged the camouflage was serving for him for a while before his music started to pop. Legend has it is that camouflage didn't pay him, and he'd run off with the earnings, and that'll eventually escalate and start a beef between the two. Felix knew that it can get bad because both parties had money, and it takes money to go to war. So Felix would tell his boys that if he ended up getting killed or anything ever happened to him, the camouflage was responsible for. It is alleged the camouflage and his homeboy Michael Grant did indeed kill Felix Scott. Hours later, Michael Grant gets killed in retaliation by Dorian Orr. Camouflage went on radio and said that he will be riding for his friend Michael Grant. Then a couple days later, the same guy that took the soul of his friend Michael who kept camouflage lacking outside of the studio in Midtown and <laughs> with bullets striking the rapper, ultimately killing him. Dorian Orr had carried out the mission Felix put in place before he passed. Although it was well known that Dorian Orr was the one who assassinated young Jason, his homicide still goes unsolved. Camouflage would be one of 28 homicides that year in Savannah. He'd be 21 at the time of death. Camouflage and his legacy will go on to be one of the most beloved men to ever come out of Savannah, Georgia. Tears still See what I'm saying? He's one of the most beloved wow. men to ever come out of Savannah, Georgia. It's a different, man. It will be the same way in D.C. The dudes we um revere our stars like our like 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 the guy from the wire um the guy who plays slim charles in the wire his name big g he's like the um the main the lead talker of a go-go band which is like the rapper that he's like the star of a go-go local go-go band in dc and he grew up just like this cat and he's like our pride and joy in dc big g He's our star, you know what I'm saying, and um, our hood, hood star, you know what I'm saying. Like, and 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 it's just that's just how it is, man. At least for my era, I know the younger people they got their own ones, you know. But it's it's just that's just how it is, man. That's just how it is. These people are not seen as villains or anything. They're seen as Heroes it's still form in the corner of the eyes while reminiscing over him in the Gullah Geechee town of Savannah, Georgia. He leave behind his son, and he also leave behind his daughter, Fly J. Johnson, who he'd never get the blessings of meeting, but she'll go on to dominate playing basketball with LSU as a guard, representing her father and the hometown of Savannah, Georgia to the fullest. He's even loved by street icon rappers like Lil Boosie. When he immortalized him on one of his songs going through some things, when he rapped, I ain't gonna lie, I don't wanna be like camouflage. I met him one week, the next week he died, I almost cried. Dang. You two family. Man, I told y'all where he came from. Way before Quando Rondo, it was the camouflage. Camouflage was the one out there trailblazing for them street rappers, man. He was the one that we could relate to like a boozy. I let y'all know he took some shots. I let y'all know he sent some shots. I let y'all know it was back and forth retaliation up in Savannah, Georgia. I even gave y'all a little brief history on the place he came from, man. Y'all jump in the comment section and let me know who y'all want to hear next. And to the people of Savannah, Georgia, because I know y'all for the get in this comment section. I already know y'all is. I'm finna say, no, nah, bro, it wasn't that. No. Nah. Like I said at the end, it was all up for speculation. I'm not putting any homicides or murders on anybody because I am not a detective. I am a YouTuber. It's your boy, Crispy Clean Cliff. I'm gone. <clears throat> different universe, man. It's crazy. Yeah, man. Different world, man. It's a different world. Where you coming from, man? Better hey. believe it. Uh, you know that Joe Rogan guest that got charged with Decapitated yeah. Like that. Did you know he was a mulatto? He was a what? Mulatto. Oh, he has a white parent? Yeah, his mom is white. Wow, I would have never guessed it, man. Um, 
So he gave this real quick story. He was like, my dad was incarcerated. My grandfather was incarcerated. His son killed goes, the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, his son at 12 killed somebody. Fuck. Killed the, they attacked the Asian, um, I think an Asian kid that went to, um, what's that school up there in New York? Asian kid Columbia. that went to one of them Ivy League, yeah, Ivy League student attacked him and, and, and killed him. Um, he died, he got hit by a car. At 12 years old. He's 14, I think. I think the son was 14. And he got 18 months. The son got 18 months in, in um, juvie for that. Boot camp. 18 months of boot camp. Um, um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a different world, man, from where you're coming from, man. Um, Some students at Northeast Philadelphia High School will return to in-person learning tomorrow for the first time since eight of their students were shot at a SEPTA bus stop. Seven boys and one girl between the ages of 15 and 17 were wounded when police say three shooters jumped out of a car and opened fire at Rising Sun and Cotman Avenue <laughs> Wednesday afternoon. Our Kelly Rule joins us live. And Kelly, what's the plan for tomorrow? Well, 